How's it going today, everybody? So this is Dan with the Rapway Homestead, and today I'm gonna to show you step-by-step, -step, very simply, how to take fresh hams, so not cured or smoked or anything, raw, fresh ham, and turn it into delicious ham like you buy at the grocery store that you can just reheat in your oven very simply. Um, the other videos I've found when I was learning how to do this, I didn't, I got confused with, and I messed up a lot of stuff, so hopefully this video will help you guys cut out the learning curve. Very simple, Brian, it's super easy, step by step. So let's get started. So the first thing you're gonna need to know is your ingredients. There's just a few very simple, basic ingredients that you're gonna need. The first thing you're gonna need is your hams. You're gonna need fresh hams. I like to do two hams in a bucket, in a five gallon plastic bucket. This is a food grade bucket. Um, but if you're just doing one ham, just half this recipe, half the amount of water. Um, this recipe will fill or cover these hams, so it'll come up to a couple gallons in there. So you're going to need your fresh ham, fresh, uncured, unsmoked hams. You're going to need brown sugar. You're going to need pink cure. Um, now, this people consider this a curing salt, but this isn't like the salt... Like Himalayan pink salt. This is a, a special cure. You're gonna need just plain salt. I like to use plain salt and not the iodized salt. You're also gonna need um, just pickling spice. Now I like to use this brand, this ball brand. It tastes really great, but you can use whatever pickling spice you want. And you're also gonna need a large um, pot that'll hold at least minimum one gallon of water to uh, make your brine in. So from there, Let's get started over at the stove. All right, so now we're over at the stove, as you can see. Um, we've got all our ingredients set out here. So the first thing you're gonna need is your one gallon of water, just regular water. It doesn't have to be anything special, just regular water. Put that in our pot. There's that. Go ahead and turn that on high and get it. Uh, you're gonna wanna bring this. It doesn't really have to get up to a boil. Uh, just enough to where your salt and your brown sugar dissolve. So the next thing we're going to go ahead and add is two cups of brown sugar. One and a half cups of our plain salt. One half cup of our pickling spice. and eight teaspoons of our pink salt, pink cure. Again, from there, we'll just go ahead and stir until everything is dissolved and this should turn a nice pink color. So we'll get that done and I'll get back with you once this is all dissolved. It's important while you're doing this to make sure you keep it moving until all that sugar and salt is dissolved, it can burn on the bottom. So. I just like to continuously, slowly stir until you notice everything is good and dissolved. All right, so now that our brine um, is heated up and everything is completely dissolved, um, you'll be able to tell it's got a nice um, brownish pink look to it from the brown sugar and the curing salt. Um, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is let this completely cool. You don't wanna put this into our hams until this is completely cooled or it'll sear the outside of the ham and the, the brine won't be able to penetrate into the meat. So being I live in Minnesota and it's about 35 degrees out, I'm gonna go set this outside and let it cool and we'll get back with you. All right guys, now the next step in this process is gonna be you wanna take your, I like using a, a white plastic pail, food grade five gallon bucket with a, um, a gamma lid. So they're just the lids that thread on, but you can use any um, plastic or glass container. Um, you just wanna stay away from using anything metallic, anything metal, anything aluminum, because that pure salt will react with that and, and do bad things. So you're gonna wanna put your hams in here. Now I like to put them, like this one has a bone side down like this. So there's as little surface area contacting the bucket as possible. That way that brine can get around everything. And similarly, when you lay this in there, trying to make as little contact surface between your second ham and the first ham as possible. Now I should note as well, you can 
go ahead and use any pork to do this. Ham isn't really ham until it's um, cured, or brined and cured and smoked is when it really turns into ham. So if you don't have an actual fresh cut of ham, you can buy a just a pork butt from your local grocery store, do the same recipe, it's gonna taste just like ham. So next thing you're gonna wanna do, so I've got these guys just set in the bucket. Next thing you're gonna wanna do, this brine is cooled, so you're gonna wanna pour this in. Careful not to splash and spill. You can probably see that nice red color of that brine now. Steaming a little bit, but it's it's cooled off. It's not gonna um, sear the outside or anything like that. Go ahead and dump that in. Trying not to make a mess. And there's some stuff still stuck in. So what you're gonna wanna do is I just go ahead and fill this back up. It's gonna take approximately another gallon to fill this. Um, and I just go until the hams are, are covered in there. So it's gonna be approximately two gallons of water in this pail. So I'm gonna go fill this back up and we'll add some more. I like to add cold water back in. All right, so here's approximately another gallon of water. And you wanna make sure you get all your pickling spice, which is why I basically rinse this bucket out with my next water. And it might, it might not take the full gallon. This isn't a perfect science here. So right about there, that ham is covered. I'm gonna go and spoon out the rest of this spice. Now, there ain't much in there. We'll just go ahead and add the rest. Again, not an exact science. So this is gonna be approximately two gallons of water into here. And again, you just wanna make sure your hams are completely submerged um, in your brine, that you don't have anything sticking out. Just kind of nestle them in there. You don't want it to like really press them together too much. So then what you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and thread your lid on. And these are the, the gamma lids I was talking about. They sell these at Menards or anywhere. It's nothing too special, but they're a nice lid that seals and is fairly airtight. So you're gonna thread that on. And then the reason I like using these is I like to give these buckets a shake then, because obviously your concentrated brine is now sitting on the bottom. So I'll just kind of pick it up and give it a little bit of a shake. Hopefully it doesn't spill too bad. And there you go. That's your, that's your brine. Those, these hams will now sit in here for seven full days. So I won't count today because it's already after three o'clock. So seven full days starting tomorrow. And then we'll go ahead and get these smoked. So I'll see you guys in seven days. But for you guys, it'll be like the snap of a finger. I should note that you want to leave these in a, a cold place, obviously. So um, in your refrigerator is ideal. Right now in Minnesota, it's mid-30s, so it's refrigerator temp outside. I'm just going to go ahead and set this on my deck. All right, everybody. So it has now been the seven days that these um, hams have been sitting in our brine. So the next thing we're going to want to do is take them out and rinse them off. So you want to rinse off all that brine off the outside. Otherwise, when you smoke it, your hams are going to be really salty because all that salt will stay right on the outside. All right, let's get these out and get them rinsed. Smaller one here. So you're going to notice the nice pink color that the meat has taken on from that cure. That lets you know it's sat long enough and it's it's going into the meat. So that's what you're looking for. So I just use cool water. You don't have to scrub or anything, but you just want to rinse off all the outside stuff here. And then I don't season my hams with anything right now. I don't put anything on the outside. I just put them on just like this. You notice all these small uh, uh, pickling spices. You want to get them off. At all. And I like to set them over on a on a rack here. Um, and I put these grates down. It just makes it easier to get on and off the smoker once these are cooked. We'll get this second one out here. Get all this stuff rinsed off. Nice. And if you don't get every last pickling spice, it's not the end of the world, but you want to get the bulk of them off. I 
I'm actually going to be smoking four hams today. Um, beginning part of this video, I ended up out, off camera making a second batch of brine and going ahead and doing the last two hams I had. So, but that's all you need to do. Just give it a good rinse and then set it on your tray. All right, guys, so what we're going to be using today is just my Pit Boss. I believe this is the 1850, the larger sportsman um, series from Pit Boss. And I've just got it set at 200 degrees. And I'm using Pit Boss competition um, pellets, as well as I've got a smoke tube in here with a large chunk of meat like this. I like using a smoke tube. Um, and I've just got uh, mesquite pellets loaded into that smoke tube. So that's all I'm doing here. Nothing's fancy. You can use any smoker you have, a stick burner, um, one of the, the Bradleys that takes the pucks, anything will work. You want to hold right around that 185 to 200 degrees. So let's get these hams on. We've got our hams out here. Let's go ahead and put them on. So I'm going to go ahead and put just a single one on this side and the rack with three hams on on the left-hand side. You know, the left-hand side is the coolest side, most consistent heat. Center is obviously very hot where the fire pot is. And all the way to the right is kind of a medium, so I'll have to rotate these hams around to get a nice even cook. But we'll go ahead and put these on. Again, using these racks, it makes it really easy to do, to move things around. So go ahead and get that one on, kind of slide it as far this way as I can. Get this tray out of the way, and we'll grab this one, the big heavy one. Hopefully the lid shuts. Go ahead and slide it in there this way here. All the way to the back, hopefully without it touching. Yeah, so I don't think our lid is going to close, so I'm going to have to rearrange these already. Kind of bump this one back. Smoke in your eyes will really get you. Put this guy here. There we go. Move this one ahead a little bit. All right. <coughs> Ooh, that smoke will really get you from that smoke tube. Okay. Next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is install our temp probe. So um, these temp probes are just an Inkbird um, Wi-Fi, or not Wi-Fi, but Bluetooth thermometer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug these guys in. I've got three of them, so we're just gonna kind of guess. And we're shooting for an internal temp of 165 on these is what we're going for, so. Just kind of place these around, doesn't really matter which ones, just trying to avoid the bone and getting them into the center of the of the meat the best we can. So being that this side's hotter, I'm gonna start with two over here. There we go, go ahead and shut our lid. Now we're gonna let these go for about two hours before we start checking them. And once we start checking them, We'll let them go, or we'll check them about every hour until they're done. I'm guessing this is going to take about six hours. It's pretty cold out today, but I'll let you guys know at the end how long it did actually take so you'll have an idea. All right, so we got our hams on the smoker. We're going to let them go for a couple hours, and then, like I said, we'll start checking it every hour. And the only other thing left to do is I like to use apple cider vinegar in a... Um, in a spray bottle with about two-thirds apple cider vinegar, one-third just plain water. Um, about two-thirds of the way through the cook, once the hams start looking like they're drying out a little bit, I'll mist them with that solution or that, yeah, that solution, I guess. And what that'll do is it'll kind of um, give it a little bit of a glaze on the outside and it kind of keeps them from drying out. I don't put any other glaze on my hams. If you guys want to, go ahead. But I just like to do this. It's simple and easy, so... On our first check, we'll get back to you. All right, we're at the two hour mark. Let's jump in here and see where we're at. So the ones on this side are at 88 degrees and the ones on this side are at 77 degrees. So we're definitely gonna wanna flip flop these around, but let's take a look. I don't plan that we'll need to miss them yet, but let's see. 
you can see they're looking good the smoke tubes just about burnt out we got a nice getting a nice golden color there so we'll go ahead and rearrange these guys and get this door shut so we don't lose too much heat we're also going to spin them like this just to help with that even heating relatively quick to not let too much heat out but my temp probes are all wound up here what's going on there we go all right all right they're looking good though so i'll get back with you guys i'll continue to monitor this every hour um flip-flopping things around but i'll get back to you when i'm going to um mist them down with our apple cider vinegar water solution um i'll see let you know what that looks like all right, so we're at the four hour mark here and all of our hams are at 125 degrees. Uh, if you look, they're starting to get a golden color to them. They're darkening up. So we're gonna go ahead and, and hit them with our apple cider vinegar water combination here. Kind of mist them all down real good. Now, being that they're so even in temp, I'm not going to rotate them this time. We'll probably go ahead and rotate them next time. But next time we check in, you'll be able to see the coloration difference that this apple cider vinegar makes on them. All right, so we are coming up on the seven hour mark here. This is taking a bit longer than I thought, but that's smoking meat for you. So let's take a look. Right now we're sitting at about 147 degrees on all of them so i have rotated them once since we spoke last so i don't think we're gonna mess with them but let's take a peek uh we've got our apple cider vinegar here in case we need it yep these are getting a nice dark color and you can kind of see the the almost the glaze that they're getting on the outside so we'll go ahead and hit them again with this All right, so we'll let them go now until they're until they're done. All right, guys, so we're sitting about eight hours now, and I'm glad I double checked because these hams actually only have to hit an internal temp of 145. So we're looking about 150, 155-ish now. So unfortunately, I did let them go just a little bit too long. No big deal. It's not going to hurt anything by any means. Um, but I did miss speak. 145 is the internal temp you're shooting for on these so let's go ahead and pull them off go ahead and lay them on our trays here Looking delicious. One rack. And here is a second rack. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video with me here today. Um, hopefully help you and your next time you try to make some fresh hams easter is coming up for us so hopefully it uh this will turn out well for you like i said i did end up actually overdoing these by a touch um by about 10 degrees actually but they'll still be great uh 145 again is the internal temp you're shooting for but uh, please throw me a comment on something you've done with ham or would like to try in the future uh, and please subscribe if you haven't already um do a lot of videos on the, the homestead here of cooking some meat and a lot of stuff on the pit boss so if you enjoyed that kind of content let me know and until next time guys you have a good one